Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm going to continue on how to use a headless Raspberry Pi. In the previous video, we concentrated on how to safely stop a Raspberry Pi when it wasn't attached to a keyboard, mouse, or monitor. In this video, I will concentrate on how to start applications in a headless configuration. So why don't you join me as we dive into various methods for automatically starting applications on your Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to go through the standard safety spiel today since it's just programming. Just don't get too excited and fall off your chair during the video. Now let's get started. During startup, Linux uses over a half dozen methods at different stages to determine which programs to initiate to complete the boot process. Each of these methods provides an opportunity to also start a user script. This list shows the methods in approximate boot order with the ones at the top earlier in the boot process than the ones at the bottom. In this video, I will examine six different methods for initiating a user script at boot. For reference, I will be using a Raspberry Pi Zero W loaded with Raspbian Linux 10, which is Buster. One of the first directories that a booting Raspberry Pi looks at is etc slash init.d. To prepare a script for use with init.d, a special initializing section is added to the script. This section makes the script Linux standard base compliant. After the script is moved into the etc slash init.d directory, permissions are adjusted to allow the script to be executed. Then enter update-rc.d your script name, defaults, to add the script to the booting process. Since this method is so early in the boot process, some of the services that the script will need might not yet be loaded, so there could be problems. In addition, I found that if you aren't careful, the user script could actually be started twice, again because resources are being loaded in parallel while your script is trying to run. So unless you need the script to run early in the boot process, I'd recommend that you choose a method other than init.d. The next method is to use Chrome. Crone is a time-based software scheduler that you can configure to start a process at reboot. First, edit the crone tab file by typing sudo crone tab e. Then add a command to start the script at reboot to the bottom of the file, like at reboot sudo home slash pi slash bin slash my crone tab. Then save the file and make sure the script has the proper permissions. Then the next time you reboot, the script should run. The third method I tested is rc.local. Edit etc slash rc.local and then add a command that starts the script. Make sure to add an ampersand at the end so that the script will run as a separate process and allow the Pi boot process to complete. Note that the command must be placed just above the exit zero statement. About halfway through the boot process, the Raspberry Pi begins implementing services using the systemd init method. In this case, I defined a new unit file called sample.service in lib systemd system. Add the name of the script you want to start after the exec start equals. Then change the permissions by typing sudo chmod 644-lib-systemd-system-sample.service. Finally, tell systemd to start the unit file by entering sudo systemctl daemon-reload. And then finally, sudo systemctl enable sample.service. The 
fifth method I tested was to use .bashrc, which starts the script on boot and also every time a new terminal is opened. Edit home slash pi slash dot bash rc and add the command to start the script at the bottom of the file. In this case, sudo slash home slash pi slash bin slash my bash rc. Save the file and then reboot. All the previous methods we have looked at start the scripts before the graphical user interface loads. This last one, auto start, waits until after the GUI loads. Edit etc slash xdg slash lx session slash lxde dash pi slash auto start and add the script you wish to execute preceded with the at symbol. Save the file and reboot and the script should begin. To demonstrate all six methods, I created six scripts, one for each method. The first scripts I wrote were pretty simple, just listing the name of the method I was using and the time it executed. Since I had created six different scripts, I thought I would do a little experiment. What would happen if I started all the scripts at once? What I got was a file that listed the order of the various methods initiated. I also started seeing some funkiness in how init.d acted, so I investigated a little more. This time I rewrote all the scripts except init.d to write the name and time, once at the beginning and then again 30 seconds later. For init.d, I would print out the time every second for 20 seconds. This would identify when the Raspberry Pi synchronized with the internet time. Here's the timeline I generated from the results of my experiment. As you can see, the init.d script actually started about 58 seconds after power up. The init.d script was estimated to take 20 seconds, but actually took 42 seconds in part because so many other things were going on during the early boot process. About four seconds after the init.d script started, the crone tabs script started. Five seconds after that, the RC local script started. Note that the real time clock was synchronized to the internet time at about 83 seconds after power up. At this point, I expected the systemd service script to start, but instead, 18 seconds later, the bash RC script began. Seven seconds after that, the auto start script started. It wasn't until after the init.d script ended that the systemd service script initiated. This exercise confirmed that using init.d is not for the faint of heart. Not only might init.d start twice, but systemd will not start until init.d is complete. In addition, my init.d script was also started when the Pi was being shut down. So if the script you use in init.d has an endless loop, you will never be able to shut down the Pi safely. I would recommend using the auto start method if time is not an issue because I can be assured that all the services needed for any script have already been loaded. I would also recommend using crone and RC local. Systemd also works but is a little more complicated. I would be careful using an init.d script because of its interaction with the rest of the boot process. Finally, bash RC is a little inconvenient since it initiates every time before a terminal session is started. If you have an endless loop in your bash RC script, you won't be able to get into a terminal session for debugging. Thanks for joining me today. We examined six methods for starting a script during the boot process of a Raspberry Pi. We'll use these techniques in the future as we make various monitors and sensors. I hope you'll join me next time as we dig into how to build a motion detector that sends an email anytime motion is detected. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down and leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe 
and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon.